Great. So, you know, one of the things that Thai Bangalore uh, we found was, you know, there's a lot of uh, competition for Thai now. <laughs> Let me say it's a it's one of the more uh, you know hyper uh, environments. Uh, there are lots of organizations, uh, and uh, you know, there's just a lot of events. There's lots of workshops. There's lots of corporates uh, who are already engaged. So we were trying to find ways in which work we did at Thai. Uh, had a slightly differentiated approach, right, to the what was already available. Or oh, let's not reinvent the wheel. One of the one of the benefits of being Thai and having both credibility, brand, and long-standing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of tenure in the community, is that the government is willing to work with you, as opposed to some of the more new age organizations. And so the government was very keen. As at all levels in India now, there's great interest in funding startups and helping startups. And interest doesn't always translate to execution. Let me, let me separate the two. Uh, and so intent is there. And so we said, where there's intent, let's try and find a way to exploit that for the benefit of founders, right? Uh, and so in Karnataka, uh, we had a very progressive IT minister, uh, Mr. Priyank Kharge, uh, who was looking to really try and push the entrepreneurship uh, process forward in Karnataka. And, you know, one of the, you know, there are basically, for me, there are four, four Cs, right? There's co-founders, there's one C that entrepreneurs are looking for. Uh, there's basically, they're looking for coaching. This is the mentorship aspect of things. Uh, they're looking for, uh, you know, customers. That's the third C. And they're looking for capital. That's the fourth C. I mean, it pretty much comes down to, I, I boil all our Thai programs down to one of these four Cs, right? I say, which, four, which of these four Cs or pillars are you going to impact? And if you're not, mostly the entrepreneur's not interested, right? Uh, and so the, the capital one is always the hardest because, uh, you know, the bar is quite high when somebody's going to write a check. <laughs> and so we said, okay, this government program came along. Uh, the government is very interested in, uh, in funding early stage entrepreneurs. So that was the other criteria. You know, when you get to a point where a company is fundable by angels and VCs, again, in an environment like Bangalore, there are a lot of routes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, while Thai can channel in some sense, uh, we don't necessarily deliver differentiated value. The other thing was how can we do something at scale? Not just two, three, five startups, but maybe a hundred, right? So this was a, uh, an opportunity that presented itself, and I wanted to kind of show it up to you all, share with you something maybe that's a little different. Uh, it's also very tricky working with the government, right? And so uh, I'm glad to talk anybody who's planning to do anything through, uh, you know, how to kind of navigate that, at least what, what decisions we made and what construct we had. So, you know, I, I, I've, I've thrown together a bunch of slides that, you know, Kunal, who's our ED, uh, help me put together and, you know, just to give you a flavor of what it is. So this is the end kind of slide, right? What was the positioning we had? The government said we want to impact 100 plus startups. We want to do it fast. We want industry to help because no government babu can sit down and make a decision on whether to fund this company or not. Uh, you know, once we put this out in the community, there's going to be a lot of interest. Uh, we need somebody to go through and analyze the pipeline, shortlist, do all that work, right? So this is kind of the, the, the essence of the program. There were four or five areas we defined, and I'll walk you through those later, uh, in terms of what, what you had to be. But you had to be a company. You had to be an LLC or a, uh, or a startup uh, that's a private limited company. Uh, you should not have really been funded significantly before. Problem is every startup has got some funding or the other, right? <laughs> some uncle has written a check at least or some, some friend has written a check. So you can't say you cannot be funded because that's not a criteria that works quite cleanly. We just said you can't be institutionally funded. You shouldn't have taken, let's say, you know, in a kind of rough thing about 250,000 or more, right? Uh, so you could still be pretty early stage. And, you know, we, we had a lot of interest in this program when we launched it with the government. We worked very closely with them to define kind of the filters, the process. Uh, it was statewide. Uh, so we actually went to three different cities. Our charter members went to three different cities to filter startups. 1,700 applicants came in. 
And so, you know, we were kind of overwhelmed, honestly, <laughs> when you get 1,700 of anything and you have to look through every plan. Uh, all your best plans go to, go, to, go to crash landing, right, in some sense. So we actually ended up having to bring in a lot of charter members to help us with the filtering process. Originally, the plan was the team would do it themselves, the first round of filtering, but even that was just too much for the team to do. So we ended up bringing in a whole bunch of charter members who helped us filter through online the first round of uh, these, these startups. And, you know, basically about 1,200 of them actually were pre-screened uh, after the pre-screening process. So basically the first four or 500 we eliminated based on uh, the, the, the incomplete applications, all of that. And then we ended up with about 60 charter members helping uh, us select the final 100. And uh, you know, basically 35 crores, which is about $800,000 approximately. Five million. Eight, five, five million, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm doing my math wrong here. So it's a reasonably, uh, you know, impressive number for startups that are early stage. So each one of them got anywhere from 10,000, 10, was the smallest grant, $10,000, to all the way to about $100,000, right? And these were grants. That's the other thing I should say. Uh, we, we, we managed to work with the government to convince them that they don't need to own paper in 100 companies <laughs> and be shareholders in 100 companies. Even if it was a dead instrument, whatever way you did it, finally they, they would have a headache on their hands uh, and very little would be achieved. Uh, we, 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 they, we looked at models where would you get a VC or an angel fund to co-invest alongside the government so to keep everybody kind of uh, have skin in the game. We rejected that as well because then you couldn't get to 100. Uh, you know, we talked to a lot of the angel groups and nobody would, you know, commit to doing 100, right? And we really wanted to make sure we, we created enough scale across all of these. So, a little bit of a unique program in the sense that 100 startups got funded between 10 and 100, 100K USD each. Uh, the money has already been dispersed to everybody. That was the other thing. Oftentimes, you hear about things that get announced, <laughs> even a startup is selected, but then you have a huge uh, runaround to get the money. Uh, the, this is where I think, uh, you know, having a very progressive minister in place, he made sure that uh, the money was dispersed, uh, you know, very within 90 days of the decision being made and with very little paperwork uh, in terms of, you know, no more diligence. We, we did whatever diligence we needed to do up front. Uh, and then we have milestones. In almost all of these, the startups have to come back and present uh, to the, the working committee, which is made up of all industry folks. Uh, where they are, and then they get the second tranche, right? So everything was at least two tranches, just to make sure that we don't just have people collecting the money, uh, you know, spending it on all the wrong things, and then, you know, the program uh, can't sustain itself because, you know, we wanted to make sure that the startups were really using this for uh, building a product. The other thing we said was we put some rules around how the money could be used. So you can't just be paying yourself salaries, <laughs> Uh, because that, you know, given uh, all the startups are pretty much starving at the first stage, they would just consume whatever grant we gave them in that and not make any forward progress. So we said it had to be for possibly hiring somebody who's a non-founder, uh, paying a stipend, paying some uh, consulting fees, paying a little early salary, buying equipment that you might need wherever you can, please use shared, wherever you can, lease, rent. Uh, you know, uh, uh, but but if you have to buy in some cases, uh, we we allowed that and uh, basically tried to put some constraints around that without becoming too nitpicky also, right? There's a balance you need to strike. Uh, so I think all of that was achieved. Uh, we got the, the funds out to the entrepreneurs. A uh, hundred startups have got funded. Uh, there's an election coming up in Karnataka, so I'm not sure where, uh, you know, if, uh, where we'll end up with the new government. Uh, but, you know, we hope this is a program that we'll be able to sustain into the new year. And that this serves then, once this was done, actually many other states have looked at it as a template that they would like to drive. And so hopefully other Thai chapters will be able to pick up some parts of what we did and go back to their state governments and propose something similar. I, what I'd like is, one, you're not touching the cap table. Uh, two, it's a relatively small grant in terms of from anywhere from 10 to 100K. Uh, but it's an enabler, a real catalyst for many of these companies. And uh, the third was the kind of constraints around the use cases of use of the funds that you could, uh, where you could use it. And it was broad enough, and 100 companies got funded. So 
I think we'll see some winners from there. Now, we, we, we can't claim all the credit for all the winners, but at least, you know, it's more than 10 companies, right? Otherwise, the law statistics uh, will prove that you may not have a winner. You may not have anything to show for the program. So hopefully, three or four years from now, we'll have 10 or 12 entrepreneurs who will come forward and say, hey, uh, this was really helpful. And so, uh, you know, that was the, the goal of the program. Part of the program was also to fund women entrepreneurs. Uh, so we went out and made sure uh, a certain number of these grants were given to women entrepreneurs. Uh, from, and there again, it's a little tricky. I mean, no one company is purely a woman entrepreneur. <laughs> you know, there we had to define again uh, kind of the rules uh, uh, reasonably uh, liberally in the sense that we made sure it wasn't just a, a woman who's acting as a front, obviously, to the startup, uh, but that it was a key decision making, operating uh, person, right? Who's uh, on the board, uh, a, a real co founder, and uh, driving. The, the kind of the, the strategic decisions of the company. You know? So that's where this program, I think, you know, uh, being a knowledge partner was very important. I think there were other, uh, we, we managed to get mentors from across the ecosystem for the program. There were other partners as well that we managed to rope in. One of the things we wanted to do was not make this just a Thai thing, right? We, we, we managed to get a lot of other community, uh, you know, uh, organizations, ecosystem partners involved as well. I think that was very important, but, uh, you know, a lot of the early screening went out uh, with our, our, our partners uh, and uh, our charter members. Now, 100 of these companies have also become, uh, you know, affiliate members of Thai. So we're now in the process of mentoring them. So that this is the other, the coaching part of it, right? So he said, okay, he given them the money, <laughs> you know, let's make sure we get those 10, 12 hits out of the 100 at least, if not 25 hits, right? And by hits, I mean, I'm not uh, expecting somebody, uh, you know, will, will go IPO or anything. I'm just saying, at least they should get to the next round of funding. Uh, angels should now be willing to put the money in. Uh, they, maybe some of them will get to a Series A. Because don't forget, these are very early stage. They all had prototypes of some kind, but uh, they were not full-fledged companies, right? In, 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 the, in, the, in the sense that you might think of as a Series A or even VC ready uh, uh, in terms of, you know, for fundability. Just a quick look so you get a feel for the scale and how many companies actually got the funding. Uh, it's all up there. Uh, you know, when you have 100, <laughs> you have three columns and three slides, right? So of companies who actually got the check, they're all up on the, on the, on the state's website with the, how much money they got. The great thing about working with the government is everything has to be disclosed to, right? Uh, in kind of a very transparent way, uh, all the decision making has to be disclosed to. So we had to be quite meticulous and this is a little bit problematic in terms of uh, you know, why you pick one startup versus another, because there is a little bit of subjectivity finally among the group. <laughs> exactly. So the RTI rules apply. So, you know, we had to be quite diligent. And that, that was a bit of a pain because normally in a pitch session, you know, the investors will put their hands up and those that don't walk away and those that do, they may or may not complete the round, right? This had to be much more rigorous than that. So, you know, uh, it, was, it took a lot of effort from our team, uh, the Thai staff and uh, they, but, they, but they managed to get through it. So, you know, I hope this is useful in terms of, you know, a program that, you know, delivered real value to 100 plus young st uh, companies in, in Bengaluru last year. It all happened last year. We hope to repeat it. I think there's, uh, you know, whatever happens in the elections, I, I bet either government will want to come, come back and repeat it. And the good thing about doing a program at this scale with this much visibility is that the next person coming in doesn't want to stop it. Uh, if the same government comes in, then they don't want to keep momentum going because it was a, a, a good job. And for us, honestly, it's a great way of seeding 100 companies in our community and working with them as mentors going forward. So they're, and they're all affiliate members of Thai now. And, you know, hopefully they... They, they, they'll, they'll be you know, more active within the Thai community going forward. Thank you. Thank you.